I would say that the majority of entrepreneurs I meet feel that sales is either their weakest link or at least enjoyable part of their business. But we all know that sales is the lifeblood of every business. So what can we do about this phenomenon? Many turn to marketing firms, which help part of the way in getting traffic, but sales is still left as the weakest link. Then there are those who outsource their sales, but they continually get let down by the overpromising rampant in that industry. So let's get real on the subject and find ways to stop losing money that is sitting right under our noses. Joining me today to help with this discussion is Phil Coley. He's an entrepreneur with over 30 years experience in sales and marketing. He's got, he got his start selling advertising for original newspaper and escalated to consultancy positions with some of the UK's leading contact centers. Phil has a degree in sports science, majoring in sports psychology, and he's worked directly with Olympians, world, and European champions across many sports, and also attended the 1992 Olympic Games. Welcome to the show, Phil. It's amazing to be here. Thank you, Buzz. Thank you for having me on. Thanks for making the time. I think that this is one of those topics that so many people don't want to talk about because it's painful for a lot of people, right? Most business owners didn't get into the business to sell things, which is really Absolutely. weird, right? Like the actual <laughs> act of selling is the last thing they thought about. They knew they were going to have things sold, right? But they never thought about the actual act of selling. And you have, it seems like a longer entrepreneurial, it seems that you have a longer entrepreneur journey than I do. You, you started at, what, at the age of 12? Yes, I certainly did. Yeah, I did start at the age of 12. And for me, I don't know, I just always had that entrepreneurial spirit. And yeah, I started up a little free paper in our sort of local neighborhood, which in those days, and I'm showing my age now, is using letter set and it was an A4 piece of paper and then photocopying it and sending out about 200 copies and had a few free ads in. That, that's where I started and just was like, well, I can put stuff in. And I can remember the first ever advert I ever sold in my whole life was to the local butchers and it was for 10 pence in UK money all those years ago. <laughs> I love it. So we always hear about folks who have been around. I started my first entrepreneurial experience was picking up walnuts on my parents' farm. And my grandfather would buy them from me who at wholesale, of course, at a dollar twenty-five a gunny sack, which is a lot for a little kid. It probably yeah. weighed more than I did at the time. <laughs> Oh, uh, so yeah, I get it. I get it. When we hear these stories that we hear about the salesmanship of entrepreneurs and folks who have made it in tremendous success with their careers and entrepreneurs, and it always comes down to sales, but we keep seeing people suffering with that. So are traditional sales are they dead? Great. That's a great question. I love that question. Is traditional sales dead? For me, no, it's not. But I think a lot of people think it is. And we've become surrounded by digital. Everything has to be digital. Everything is digital ads. Everything is Google. Everything is Facebook. And spend your money and off you go. And I'm like, you're actually starting to lose the sense of what real sales is about. And I heard recently somebody say that if you have good marketing, then you haven't got you, you don't need sales. And for me, there's a sort of adage in there somewhere, but for me, marketing is a brand awareness to bring something in. And where I see people really fail is they forget to go back to the basics from years and years ago, is that if somebody makes contact with you in any way, shape or form, you've got to have the ability to handle them. And yes, you can use technology to do that. But when you have the human side of it, and when you look at most entrepreneurs, You'll have some who really understand e-commerce, but a lot of people are still B2B, B2C. You've still got the human interaction. They have the lead. They have the inquiry come to them and they have no idea what to do next. They just think the person actually wants to buy from them. And when they actually ask them a question about the product, they're like, I don't know. My product does this and this. They just don't talk about benefits. So I think for me, traditional sales is definitely here and it's in the right way. It's the best thing that any entrepreneur can learn is traditional sales is here to stay. It's a real simple process, but people have got bamboozled by digital. So you're talking about things like, like Facebook and other social media places, maybe click funnels and stuff like that. Like click funnels, I think is one of the ones that I 
looked into a few years ago. And I love Russell Brunson. Like I, I think that the philosophies that he's adopted from the Kings that he learned from, and he was able to write his books around are great. Unfortunately, I think that the, the platform that he chose was just hasn't been what we really need. And some of the philosophies that are taught through those are starting to wane. How long or how much longer do you think platforms like ClickFunnels are going to last? For me, and I've said this recently, and I'll say it again today, I think for me, click funnels are on the way out. And it's not Russell's on the way out. I just think the process and everyone talks about funnels it doesn't have to be talking about click funnels per se. Right. I think those kind of ways, they're just really having their day. And the reason I say that is we've, we live in this fast society and people want answers quickly, but also people value their time because they want things done quickly. And when people value their time, they're savvy now that people aren't idiots. They know that when they fill in a form to get a guide, to get this, to get that, they just know they're going to get a load of emails afterwards. And yes, they can unsubscribe, but they're like, I don't want the hassle of it anymore. And so for me, I think they are going to die. I think there's lots of other things that are coming through that will take the place of things like click funnels. We see the growth in video content now. And I always laugh when people say video is the new thing. I'm like, for 50 or 60 years, we've been used to a square box in the corner of a TV in <laughs> right. the room, used to it. It's like, why is this thing new? But I think click funnels, but really interesting when you talk about Russell, the big campaign he's got at the moment, which I've seen, he's actually sending out Dan Kennedy items. So he's sending out Dan Kennedy materials. So any of your listeners, just Google Dan Kennedy. You will see he's one hell of a salesperson and he's old school. So old school. Russell's sending that stuff out. So actually for me to go back to my other question is traditional sales is not dead. But I think ClickFunnels, there, there will be something different come through. But I do think it, it's a real change. And again, for your audience, particularly in the US, is if you go and check out Alex Hormozzi, go and check out what he's doing. He has no click funnels at all. You can go and buy his book for 99 cents off Amazon. And he talks about if you give the quality of what you do and people use it and see the difference it makes, they'll knock on your door. You don't need to have click funnels. And that's definitely something I talk to my clients about. And it's something I definitely do for my own business. I don't have any click funnels. I will give a whole load of sales content for people to use. They'll go, wow, this works, and then they'll come and approach me. That, that to me, I think is the new way that we're going. I think that you're absolutely correct. I see it going in the way of value forward. There are Ryan Dice from Digital Marketer, somebody that I know and was a keynote speaker at the Traffic and Conversion Summit here just a few months ago, talked about it as well, where we're, we're seeing the, the micro transactions to get people into funnels is now getting flipped on its end, right? And so we still want to give all of that value up front to where people will engage. I think yeah. that's perfect. And I don't think that's ever going to go away. People yeah. are going to want more and more of that value, right? But I think that instead of let's get you in for $14 or $9.99, although those, those are types of funnels, it's a sales funnel. You're basically getting the buy-in at some value, right? They're like, hey, I'm going to give you a bunch of stuff for a very little price. I'm going to give you all this value, but I want to know that you're bought in. I'm I want to know that you're willing to at least pull out your wallet because if you're not, this is too valuable to just give away, even yeah. though you technically are, right? And, but then- from there, what a lot of people are saying, and I agree with, is that you've got, if you've shown that value, you need to show them the top, the apex of your offerings up front and do the reverse funnel. Now, instead of saying, okay, spend the $14. Now spend me $29 or $27, the, the sevens. I love the sevens <laughs> yeah. everybody uses, right? In sales. And then we'll get you the 97. And then... The forty nine ninety nine ninety nine. It's just like it's like crescendo, and it's just like for a lot of people like me who are too busy to go through that whole process, which is what you're basically describing. It's like just give me the goods up front. Yep. E either I'm in for it or I'm not. Either you've given me enough value to talk about it right now, or I'm not the person you're looking for for Apex. Give me other options and do the reverse funnel. So if that is, how do we get back to that? Because I feel it's traditional. Even you can use the, the digital marketing for 
sales. That's it's part of it used to be called sales and marketing or marketing and sales, right? They work together, people. <laughs> it's not like neither of them are in a silo, right? And you have these companies who literally they're like, hey, listen, we're just going to cold call a bunch of people. We're going to sell them on the phone. High ticket items. Let's go. Right. You've run a couple oh, of those, yeah. right? Right. So how do we get back to the traditional sales to work for us? I think it's really important though, just to pick up on what you said then about sales and marketing, marketing and sales, is you're absolutely right. The one can't work without the other. And too many people get fixated on that. And you do see that with marketing agencies in particular. They'll be like, oh, we'll do all this marketing. You don't really need the salespeople. You're like, you do need the salespeople. You genuinely do. You can't do it any other way. But I think to get back to the tradition, it's about people understanding what the process looks like is you're out there generating noise and that noise has got to turn into something. And you're right in not so much the, the funnel side, but you've got to be able to have something that can pull people in. And you, you can go back to traditional stuff. And when I look now at, say, something like Facebook ads, or you look at Google ads, and people go, oh, you've got to get, you might get a conversion of 1% or 2%, and it's going to cost you this and cost you that. I go back to actually when I originally started selling newspaper ads, you were like, you're going to have to put some codes on there to see actually are people using these newspapers or magazines. It's no different to codes of cookies today. You look at cookies and you look at links. It's no different to what it was 30, 40 years ago. And come back to that about tracking what you are doing and where you're doing it as a salesperson. Because if it's working in an area, then you're going to exploit it. At the moment, you do get a lot of this. Let's try everything and see what happens. And I'm like, traditional salesperson will look in an area, see if it works. And actually say they're knocking doors on an industrial estate or a business park somewhere and they get success. They go, where's another business park just like this? Because I'm getting the same success. You can test things without necessarily spending a fortune. And that takes you back to the real essence of sales is you test, you test, and then you just drill as deep as you can go to get the results. Don't go, oh, I'm going to try something different. Why? You're going to try something different. It is working. Don't get overly greedy. So that's where I see in traditional sales. You just work it and you work hard. This is the other thing, though, is a lot of people say you work smart, not hard. Yeah, OK, I get that. But in traditional sales, the harder you work, the more sales you get, because it is definitely a numbers game. And if right. you don't realize that and you don't understand it's a numbers game in sales, then you will not succeed in your sales. And that's where people get it wrong. They do a few calls, doesn't work. Do more calls because it will work and then you'll get excited because you'll see your conversion rates. But don't judge it on one set of ads. Don't judge it on one post. Don't judge it on one video. Don't judge it on 10 mm -hmm. calls. Be really specific and do it for a period of time to look at your... I, mean, I think that learning along the way as well, it's like in, in sports, it's repetition, right? We're yep. doing it over and over. And I think there's a saying that says, once you feel like you're brain tells you you're tired, you're only what, 40% or something like that away from actual yep. exhaustion. Yep. 40%. I think in sales, our brains tell us we are tired of selling at about 10% of exhaustion. <laughs> like we have so much more in the tank. And I can't agree with you more about the fact that if it's not broken, don't fix it. If you get one sale, figure out what worked there. What yep. did you feel the best about? What didn't you feel good about? Take note of it, but you don't have to make sweeping changes. Make exactly. the small incremental changes. Right? There's, I can't remember who is talking about it. I think it's Millet, Ed Millet. He talks about the 1% change. You know, like yeah. 300 days yeah. later, you'll be 300% yeah. better. Yeah. Sales are the same way. If you start with one phone call and you fail, get 1% better. Yep. 300 calls from then, you're going to be 300% better than you are today. Period. Absolutely. And I don't Absolutely. care if you're being successful or unsuccessful along the way. But I think that your the situativeness that you're talking about is so important. And I also think that entrepreneurs try to, to either delegate or outsource sales way too fast. Yeah. Oh, okay. I think, and you tell me if you agree with this, the entrepreneur is the best salesperson for their business because they're the most passionate about the business. Would you agree with that? And there is nobody more... Yeah, there's nobody more passionate about their business than the owner of the business. There just isn't. Even when you employ staff, you cannot employ staff to be more passionate than you. It's just, it doesn't happen that way. Right. But I think that the two things I just want, just want to mention is 
when you said about the sports analogy, and that's why for me, I think my background in sport and my professional background in sport and my background in sales, when I put the two together, it's all about marginal gains. So when you look at the highest level, the highest performing individuals, they have a coach. Now, that coach is not changing everything. That coach is looking at that marginal gain of 1%. It's that one little tweak. And that's exactly the same for a business owner doing sales. You can make one tweak that turns you from a top 10 to a gold medalist. It's one thing. And that's the same in sales. Right. I love it. So what can we do right now, like immediately start doing to make sales more enjoyable again and start seeing better results, seeing these incremental results? The one thing I'm going to say now, which is proven and something that really hits home to people is following up. So it's following up on an inquiry or a proposal or a lead, whatever you want to call it. And it doesn't matter if it's a digital inquiry or it's somebody who's been on your website and asked a question or it's somebody who's reached out to you and you've spoken on the phone or you've met in person, wherever it is, you have to follow up. Now, 75% of people do not follow up after the second time. 75%. It's just absolutely nuts. So if you follow up on the third time, most of your competitors will have dropped out. So you've got even more chance of winning that because you've actually followed up. And people don't follow up because they're scared of somebody saying no. And what I I say to people is, if you think about the world of selling, all of us in our lifetime will sell to feel good because we'll want to find a partner, somebody we're going to marry, someone we're going to live, some of our children, whatever. We are selling ourselves every single time. So when you do that and say you've gone on the first date with somebody, if you don't message them back or you don't follow, you're not going to see them again. So you'll try or they haven't replied and you wait by your phone. They still haven't replied. Oh, I'll try again. I'll try again. It's the same in sales, but you have a strategy of your follows up. But if you follow up more than three times, you have got 50 percent more chance of winning that sale. And that's the number one for me in sales is to follow up and follow up again. So. How can we make that enjoyable? Because people don't like to hear no. And I know I'm guilty of not liking doing the same thing over and over and over and over again, not getting immediate results. How can we make this part of our lives as entrepreneurs enjoyable again? The best way to do it is to set yourself a target. So a bit of goal setting, say I'm going to make 10 calls, 20 calls, whatever. But the one way you can do this to be able to change things around and actually make it enjoyable is you've got two types of question you can ask. You can ask closed questions. Will you go out with me? Yes or no? It's a yes or no. That's it. There's no other way. But you can also then ask open-ended questions. How does that sound to you? How do you feel about that? Where will we be in 12 months about this? So when you start to use open-ended questions in sales, you're creating the dialogue where the person can't say yes and the person can't say no. You're in that kind of conversation. Of course, you're you're going to ask for the sale eventually. But in terms of that, to make it really enjoyable is think about some really fun questions with how can I use the analogy for the U.S. market in particular? Yeah. So in American football, when you score a touchdown, you then have I don't know what the kick afterwards is. It Extra point. Extra point. Okay, so the extra point. So you've got the posts in front of you. So I can relate in the UK. We love rugby. But in, in the US, you've still got these posts. You've got to kick the ball over. Same thing. So I talk about five bums on a rugby post. So five bums on an American football post. Same things. So that's five W's and one H. So if you think about that, think about how many questions can I think about who are high, who in terms are how, what, why, where, when and who. Think of those kind of questions when you're in that follow up to make it a little bit of fun. How does that sound to you? Where are you going? What more can I do for you? Ask questions like that because the person has to then talk to you without saying a yes or a no, but they'll give you the ammunition to go, this person's really interested in what I'm doing. Now I'm going to ask the question because too many people just go, do you want to buy? Just build up to it and make sure you've covered all your objections. That's the number one tip I would give. Ask open-ended questions, cover all the objections. Nobody's got a chance to say no then. Beautiful. Good job. All right. 
Awesome. So now are you, so you're, 